What are the last checks that you need to do to the car before going to the track for the first time? First of all, I'm gonna center my servo because I'm switching on my radio here, as well as the speedo. Everything's centered on the radio, everything is at zero. So we're then gonna put the servo saver on the servo here. I am going for servo saver being completely straight or pointing a little bit towards the inside of the car. The manual says that this link, this link should be at a 90 degree angle. It doesn't have to be perfectly like that, but usually you get the most equal geometry when this is pointing a bit towards the center of the car. But we're going to fine tune that when we have the car in the setup station. For now I'm just going to tighten down the um, screw on the servo saver. That's what you need to do when you switch on the, the radio for the first time. Okay, that's in place. The next thing I can suggest is to, if you have a radio which has the function of expo, steering expo, you can turn down the steering expo from zero to minus five, for example. It's a good starting point. You can even use minus 10. If you drive with a stick radio, not wheel, I suggest you to use more negative expo, such as 10 or 15 or even 20%. But for a wheel radio, normally you can use a bit less. Negative steering expo makes the steering less sensitive around neutral. So basically makes it a bit more forgiving and smoother, which uh, even us pro drivers, we use this function to make our driving more consistent. You can also use this for the throttle channel, but usually it's more efficient to set your, your throttle curves and such in the ESC settings. So not on the radio, but in the, in the speed controller itself. So steering expo on the Sanwa is found in the steering menu and something that's called curve and then EXP. You set this to minus to s smoothen out the initial steering. Okay, it's done. Switch that off for now. So what are we gonna set up on the car before we can go to the track? First of all, we're gonna, we're gonna set the downstops. For that, we're gonna detach the shocks. We're gonna disconnect the shocks from the arms because we checked the, the downstop without the shocks connected. We got these 10 millimeter blocks here, which, which the car is going to rest on. So we already tightened down our top deck earlier on the setup board. So the top deck is flat and it's straight. I'm going to double check these screws here. Everything is tightened. Okay. The downstop. We're gonna check the downstop here. Under the rear arm, we're gonna use a downstop gauge from Hoodie. is stepped in fine steps of 0.2 millimeters. Slide it under the outer edge of the arm. Now we check the value here. So in this case, it's 4.6 under the rear arm, which is a good basic setting for 
for flat tracks with good grip. For lower grip or for bumpy tracks, for example, I recommend using more droop. You achieve more droop by using a lower uh, downstop value. So instead of 4.6, for example, you can use 4.4, 4.2, or even 4.0 to give the car more droop. You need to keep in mind that when you raise the right height of the car, you also automatically reduce the droop. So normally you should compensate for a ride height change with uh, a downstop change to achieve the same amount of droop. And if you lower your ride height, you automatically get more droop in the car. So that means that you should go to a higher downstop value to retain the same droop. Okay, rear downstop set. Let's go to the front one. Shocks are not connected. And here again, we check the downstop under the outer edge of the arm here. 5.6, so one millimeter less than the rear, which is the, the value that we were looking for. You need to check this very carefully with fine adjustments to the droop screws. Okay, it's 5.6 on both sides. Now we're gonna move on to the next step, which is the anti-roll bar setting. And we've installed anti-roll bars earlier, so we know that they lift up the suspension on the opposite side and they transfer the load. But they need to lift the suspension at the exact same time left and right, so that there's no tweak here. So what we do is, normally I use a caliper for this, I find that to be the most precise. And I start to lift one side of the suspension and I look for the value where the other side starts to move. So let's see here, I'm lifting this and at 40 millimeters the other side starts to pick up. That means that's the point where the anti-roll bar starts to work. So I do the same on the opposite side and it's not really responding. It's starting to but it's not really perfect so I'm gonna Adjust the the ball studs here, the length of the ball studs, so now I loosen the ball stud on the right front to make this roll bar pick up. Almost the same time. I did it a bit too far. It's a very fine adjustment as well, but this has to be right because it's very sensitive for the handling of the car. Just a bit more here. Okay, now I'm happy with the, the lift of the roll bar between left and right. Take your time to do this because it needs to be perfect. If there's a large um, deviation in the, the height of the ball stars left and right, to be able to make it lift the same left and right, it can mean that the wire of the anti-roll bar is bent. And uh, it's rare, but it can be bent from the factory, but it's, it's normally very rare, but I've seen it before. And of course it can bend in a crash, so always check the flatness of the, the wire on the anti-roll bar in case that you need to use very different heights left and right for the ball studs. Okay, we're gonna do this also for the back. Also a bit off here. 
I'm gonna adjust this. Okay, that's perfect. When you've done this a few times, you, you get a good feeling for how to adjust uh, the roll bars. So we've set the roll bar lift, we've set the downstop. What's next? Next thing I'm gonna do is um, set the ride height. The right hand is set with a right hand gauge. I'm just going to use these setup nuts on the wheel. These are hoodie setup nuts, which can be used for the setup process. To make this very quick and simple. I'm using a hoodie finely stepped right hand gauge, which is in steps of 0 2. Gonna slide this underneath here. So we're gonna set the right height to five and five point two in the rear. Five in the front, five point two in the rear as a basic setting, which is normally used on carpet and on flat outdoor tracks. If the track is bumpy, you're gonna have to use a bit higher right height normally, such as five four, five six, five six, five eight even, if the track has bumps or some imperfections. And I always check the ride height in these two spots. Here, right in, in front of the, the battery, but behind the, uh, the front arm. And in the rear, in front of the rear arm. So behind the front arm and in front of the rear arm. And why do I check it in these, these spots? Because those are spots on the chassis where it's normally not worn as much. Okay, this chassis is brand new, it's got no wear at all, but let's take a look at this one here. This chassis is very used, so it's pretty worn here. You can see that a lot of material has gone from the chassis, so when it wears, it makes it inconsistent to check the ride height in these spots in the front or in the rear, because it's very worn, so you're gonna get um, wrong measurement for the ride height gauge. But if you measure in these two spots, they're normally not really worn, so you can you can get the same measurement even when the chassis is is older. Okay, that's the right height set. I'm gonna set the camber and the toe. I'm gonna use hoodie. Um, setup gauges for this with the setup nuts. Normally, here we look for the camber, which is too little now. We're gonna have to adjust this. So, it's done with a two millimeter hex driver here for these nuts. You simply turn this clockwise to increase the camber on this car. Two degrees of camber, front and rear, is a good starting point. For certain tires and conditions, you may need to increase the camber to get more side bite from the car, to generate more side traction. But uh, when you have too much camber, you also lose forward drive. So it's always a fine balance, but usually two degrees is our go-to setting and you cannot really go wrong with that. But obviously you can change the, the balance between front and rear grip with adjusting the camber. So if you need more rear grip, you can add camber in the rear. If you need more front grip, you can add more camber in the front, for example. Okay, what about the toe? The toe here is way too little. We usually use around two and a half or three degrees of toe. 
sometimes as low as two degrees if you, you're running in a stock class or if you're running on, on tracks where you need a lot of steering. But here is just uh, one and a half degrees right now. So we're gonna have to increase this. And on this car is done with the adjustment of the little link here for the active rear suspension. We're gonna have to shorten this to get the sufficient rear toe. We're gonna go to two and a half degrees here, which is a good basic setting. If the track has decent grip. If not, you can always use more, more rear toe. Even three or three and a half degrees. Okay, now we have two and a half degrees here on both sides. We're happy with that. Okay, what about the front? I'm gonna install these setup wheels here, which we're gonna use to set the tweak of the car. But first of all, we're gonna check the camber and the toe out in the front. I say toe out because we usually use toe out in front. We don't use toe in. It's uh, there's no reason to run toe in. It will just make the car difficult to drive, and it's just not good for the drivability of the car. So we always use at least half a degree of toe out per side in the front. Usually more. At least in modified racing, we use around one degree per side. But I can see here that the camber is a bit off, so we're gonna adjust the camber. We're gonna make the upper arm shorter on this side. On the X-ray X4, I recommend to hold the upper arm with your hand when you make adjustments so that it doesn't warp or break because it's a little, a little soft, a little fragile. Okay, so two degrees of camber per side in the front. We're gonna adjust the, the toe out, which now is less than one degree per side, but first of all, I'm gonna check the length of the steering links here, which they need to be the exact same length, left and right. This one was a bit too short. And as you can see now, the servo saver with the link is pointing a bit towards the center of the car, which is what I wanted. We're gonna switch on the radio to check the toe setting. Okay, now it's a bit away from neutral here, because everything is set to zero on the radio, but the steering is not centered. So what do we do then? We have the option to either to shorten this link or to change the sub trim on the radio. Sub trim is basically the centering of the steering, which I'm gonna turn this. I'm gonna adjust the sub trim to the left until it's completely centered. Okay. Now it's fine, it's 1.2 one, 1 of toe per side, basically. So we can then move on to check the steering lock, which we will adjust with the individual EPA, left and right. Okay, so how do we set this? You turn this down a little bit, because otherwise when you turn to full lock now, you're gonna put some strain on the steering system. So at full lock, 
it's right before the the steering link binds up against the steering. So on this car, since I removed the shim from the center of the steering, we can reach 28 degrees of steering lock per side and it's perfectly equal and you can see that the steering link is moving freely at full lock which means it's not binding up. If the steering link is not moving freely it means that the steering is pushing against the, the steering arm and this will bind up the steering during cornering which will have a negative effect on the, the flex of the chassis in the front. So the toe is now perfect. Steering lock is 28 degrees. Everything square, equal, good to go. As for the ESC setup and uh, calibration, you need to consult your manual for your speed controller. But I recommend turning down your, your brake EPA setting in the speedo to preserve the spur gear in your car, because if you use too much brake, it might um, be so aggressive that it breaks your spur gear when you push the brakes for the first time. So I personally use between 60 and 70 percent of brake EPA in the radio for modified racing. For stock sometimes you need to use more. Okay, the last step is the tweak of the car. How can we check the tweak? Let's see if it lifts even. We're gonna lift the car from underneath in the little centering hole here with a screwdriver. With the setup wheels on. We're gonna lift it off the ground slowly to see which side comes off first. Okay, this side stays on the ground longer than this. This means that we need to loosen preload in the left rear and tighten it on the right rear. So it's always a cross adjustment. This stays on the ground too long. Loosen this side, tighten this side. You can use a tweak board for this. There's tweak boards available from Hoodie as well, which they're very good and more precise than this method sometimes. But I actually prefer this method because it's a bit quicker and usually gives me the, the tweak which is good enough in most cases, it's precise enough. So this is usually influenced by the preload on the shocks. If this is really off, if you have to adjust the preload a lot, if the preload is very different between left and right, and by different I mean more than one millimeter difference in the, in the preload on the springs here, then usually it means that something's up, something's not right in the car. It can be the shock lengths being off, some imperfection in the springs, it can be a bent chassis, a broken top deck, it can be bulkheads not being straight, Downstop setting, most of all. Uh, weight balance being far off. Those can all cause um, imbalance in the preload, which you would have to adjust too much to make the tweak of the car. Now it's perfect, comes off, comes off the ground at the same time. You need to check this ideally every run, by the way. Okay, we're good to go. You can double check this on the four corner scales that I spoke about earlier. Put the car on the scales and see how much load you have on each, each tire. If it tweaks fine with the, 
with the lifting method, normally it will give you an even number on the scales. Okay, so this car is um, good to go. We can prepare the tires with additive and we can hit the track. <laughs> 